Assalamu alaikum, I am Dr. Sadia Mehzabin, lecturer department of the physiology. Today we will discuss with uh, nerve tracts with AWMC 11, second year. Okay, do you want to hear about Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, uh, today we will discuss, uh, first we discuss about the sensory tracts, okay. Uh, as we know the sensory tracts are the tracts that carry different types of sensory informations from uh, different types of sensory receptors to our sensory cortex, okay. So if we think about carrying sensations, first the sensation is received by a sense organ which is an receptor, okay. After the receptor, the sense, uh, the sensation is carried to the spinal cord uh, via the some sensory nerves, and they are known as the first order neuron. After the first order neuron that ends in the dorsal root ganglia of the spinal cord, they form different types of tracts. These are the ascending tracts because they ascend towards the brain or cerebral cortex. Okay. So, these ascending tracts, uh, they ascend either on the same side or to the opposite side. And when they ascend, uh, they also give some descending branches which are responsible for different intersegmental reflexes. So, these ascending tracts, they ascend and ends in the thalamus. This is the second order neuron where they are ending in the thalamus. Actually, all the sensory nerves end in the thalamus except the sensation of olfaction, okay. And from the thalamus, the third order neuron starts and this third order neuron ends in the somatosensory cortex. This is the third order neuron. So, there is the first order neuron, first order neuron from the receptor to the spinal cord in the dorsal root, up to the dorsal root, dorsal root ganglia. From the dorsal root ganglia, the second order neuron starts and they ends in the thalamus. And from the thalamus, the third order neuron starts and this third order neuron ends in the somatosensory cortex. Uh, the, sense, the primary somatosensory cortex is Broadman area 3, 1, 2 and they are situated in the parietal lobe. Okay, this is the primary somatosensory cortex. So, the Nikita we are discussing today the sensory tract, okay. So, we have discussed the first order, second order and third order neuron. First order neuron from receptor to the dorsal root and second order neuron from the dorsal root to the thalamus and the third order neuron from the thalamus to the somatosensory cortex. Achha, the primary somatosensory area is area number 312, Broadman area 312. It is the primary somatosensory cortex. And the secondary somatosensory area also situated in the parietal lobe, just behind the primary area, it is area number 5 and 7. Okay. So, when there is lesion of the primary area, what will happen? The primary sensations will be lost sensations like touch, temperature, uh, pressure, vibration, these will be lost when there is primary sensory area is affected. And whenever the secondary sensory area is affected, what will happen? Actually, we um, receive uh, the sensory perceptions just like the texture, just uh, the size, these sensations will be lost and this is known as a stereognosis. Okay. So, the uh, lesion in the primary area causes loss of sensation, okay. And the uh, lesion in the secondary sensory cortex or somatosensory cortex area number 5 and 7, uh, we cannot uh, actually tell what is the texture or what is the size or what is the actual shape. These uh, discrete sensations will be lost if there is lesion in the secondary sensory cortex area number 5 and 7, okay. There are other uh, important broadman areas just like area number 41 and 42. They are auditory area, primary auditory area in the temporal lobe, area number 41 and 42. And the secondary auditory area is area number 22. It is also situated in the temporal lobe. So, we are discussing about the broadman areas, broadman area, area number 
312 is the primary sensory cortex, area number 5 and 7 in the parietal lobe, they are the secondary sensory cortex. Uh, there is auditory area in the temporal lobe, primary auditory area is 41 and 42 and secondary auditory area is area number 22. We also got a uh, visual uh, area, visual area in the occipital lobe, uh, area number uh, 17 and it is the primary visual area and the area number 18 and 19 is the secondary visual area. Okay. We also have got taste area, taste area is area number 43. Okay. So, these are the Broadman areas. Achha. Um, in the, uh, the actually the nerve tract means the bundles of nerve fibers or exons. Okay, so uh, the nerve tracts in the sensory system actually divided into two columns. One is the dorsal column, and another one is the anterolateral column. In the dorsal column, there are two tracts. One is the tract of Gall uh, or fasciculus gracilis. G and G is same, tract of gall or fasciculus gracilis and another one is tract of bardac or fasciculus cuneatus, okay. So, these are present in the uh, dorsal column. In the anterolateral column, there is uh, uh, five tracts. One is the, um, most importantly, there is the spinothalamic tract anterior and lateral spinothalamic tract. There is anterior and lateral spinothalamic tract. There is spinoreticular, spinotectal and spinoolivary tract and also there is spinocerebellar tract, anterior and posterior spinocerebellar tract. So, in the dorsal column there are two, uh, two tracts. One is the tract of gall and tract of bardac and in the anterolateral column there is uh, spinothalamic tract, anterior and lateral anterior and lateral spinothalamic, there is spinoreticular, uh, spinotectal, spinoolivary and spinocerebellar tract. Cerebellar tract is also divided into anterior and posterior divisions. So, these are the anterolateral tracts. Now, when you think about the functions of dorsal column and anterolateral column, it is very important question, okay. What are the sensations that are carried by dorsal column and what are the sensations that are carried by anterolateral column. Actually, the dorsal column carries uh, fine touch, tactile localization, tactile discrimination, position uh, sense, vibration sense, these senses. Okay. So, the dorsal column carries discrete sensations just like uh, fine touch, tactile localization, tactile discrimination, uh, then there is proprioception, vibration sense, pressure sense, these are carried by dorsal column, tract of gall and bardac. Okay. Uh, among these tracts, tract of bardac is actually carry our cervical and upper thoracic sensations. Okay. Tract of bardac or fasciculus cuneatus, they carry sensations of cervical and upper thoracic and the tract of gall or fasciculus gracilis, it carries sensations of lower thoracic, lumbar and sacral. Lower thoracic, lumbar and sacral region sensations. Okay. So, these are the dorsal column sensations. Now, come to the anterolateral column. So, what are the sensations carried by the anterolateral column? They carry the pain sensations, the temperature sensation crude touch, okay, uh, temperature, both sensations, heat and cold sensations and crude touch. So, pain, heat and cold and the crude touch sensations are carried by the anterolateral column. There are also uh, some differences between the dorsal column and anterolateral column. What are the differences? One of the differences in, is the type of sensations they carry, okay type of sensations just we mentioned the type of sensations they carry is totally different okay and the second difference is that uh, the dorsal column actually carries discri discriminative pathway that means the pathway can be separated and the anterolateral column not have such discriminative pathway and also the dorsal column is much more responsive to the, uh, they show response to the anesthesia, 
okay but the anterolateral column has some resistance against anesthetic drugs okay so the dorsal column is more sensitive to anesthesia but the anterolateral column is less sensitive to anesthesia and the important difference another important difference is that the types of nerve fibers okay the type of knife, nerve fibers present in the dorsal column are uh, a delta fibers and they are myelinated and they carry impulse very fast okay but the anterolateral column they are actually small myelinated or unmyelinated fibers either c fibers or a delta fibers and um, they carry impulse uh, very slow okay so uh, the fibers of uh, dorsal column they carry and they are uh, myelinated fibers large nerve fibers a beta fibers and they carry impulse at the highest rate okay about uh, 6210 meter per second but the anterolateral column they are supplied either by small unmyelinated fibers and uh, small myelinated fibers and their impulse generation uh, transmission rate is slow it is about uh, 30 to 40 meter per second okay so these are the differences between dorsal column and anterolateral column now if uh, we go for the pathway uh, the pathway of tract of gall and barda the dorsal column uh, actually these uh, already we know that they carry the sensations of uh, light uh, touch tactile localization tactile discrimination position and vibration sense so when the these senses are perceived by the receptor uh, and the sensory neurons carry the impulse to the dorsal root ganglia and they form the tract either tract of gall or either tract of barda depending on the distribution okay and they ascend on the same side they do not cross the midline and go the opposite side the anterolateral column they cross the midline and ascend in the opposite side but the dorsal column ascend on the same side same side means ipsilateral okay ipsilaterally they ascend uh, as tract of gall and barda so the dorsal column they don't cross the midline when they reach the dorsal root ganglia they don't cross the midline they ascend on the same side ipsilaterally ipsilaterally they ascend and reaches the medulla in the medulla actually there are two nuclei uh, known as nucleus gracilis and nucleus cuneatus they end there the second order neuron ends in the medulla in the nucleus fasciculus uh, nucleus gracilis and nucleus cuneatus and from there the third order neuron starts actually when they leave the medulla they divide into two types of fibers one is the external arcuate fiber and internal arcuate fiber the external arcuate fiber they ends in the cerebellum okay and the internal arcuate fiber they goes to the medial lemniscus and then goes to the thalamus and from the thalamus they goes to the uh, uh, internal capsule corona radiata and ends in the somatosensory cortex okay so this is the pathway of tract of gall and barda actually the pathway doesn't come in this way uh, sometimes the pathway of touch is come in written question the pathway of touch as we know touch is of two types one is the fine touch and another one is the crude touch okay fine touch is carried by this tract of gall and barda then you have to write the pathway in a flow chart and the crude touch is carried by uh, anterolateral column spinothalamic tract then you have to write the pathway of spinothalamic tract so in that way you have to write in case of touch pathway okay in fine touch you have to write the tract of gall and barda pathway so uh, once again uh, we are revising the pathway okay so touch sensation carried by the receptor uh, per, uh, sorry touch sensation perceived by the receptor and carried by the sensory neuron up to the dorsal root ganglia and from the dorsal root ganglia they ascend as tract of gall and barda ipsilaterally okay and ascend and reaches the medulla 
and uh, ends in the nucleus gracilis and nucleus cuneatus. Uh, when they leave the medulla, they divide into external and internal arcuate fibers. Uh, the external arcuate fiber ends in the cerebellum and the internal arcuate fiber they goes to the medial lemniscus and from the medial lemniscus they goes to the thalamus and from the thalamus they goes to internal capsule corona radiata and to the somatosensory cortex so this is the pathway of tract of gall and bardock same pathway but their distribution is different when there is tract of bardock they carry sensations from the cervical and upper thoracic and when there is tract of gall they carry sensation of the lower uh, thoracic lumbar and sacral fibers okay so this is the pathway of uh, tract of gall and burdock so when we think about the pathway of uh, touch we already mentioned that we have to tell the fine touch by tract of gall and burdock and now come to the crude touch already we told that the crude touch is carried by anterior uh, and lateral anterolateral system that means anterior and lateral spinothalamic tract so whenever any crude touch this sensation is perceived and the sensation is received by the receptor okay and from the receptor the sensory neuron takes the impulse to the spinal cord in the dorsal root ganglia now uh, from the dorsal root ganglia they cross the midline and goes to the opposite side okay and the, from the opposite side they ascend as anterior and lateral spinothalamic tract same way they carry the uh, impulses to the medulla from the medulla to the thalamus from the thalamus in the ventral posterolateral nuclei of the thalamus okay from there the third neuron starts and these third neuron goes to the uh, internal capsule corona radiata and somatosensory cortex so this is the pathway of the crude touch okay so today we have just discussed the touch pathway uh, the introduction of the tract uh, tomorrow we will discuss about the pain and the heat pathway okay so today's class is up to this thank you for your patience hearing and patience attending the class thank you ma'am hope to see you tomorrow thank you allah fees and fiamanillah